Hi, welcome to Just One More Thing. I'm your host, Janessa, and this is a podcast about knitting, crocheting, spinning, all those fibery, crafty things that we love to do. Uh, if you are a returning viewer, thank you guys so much for all of the likes, um, for commenting, for joining the Ravelry group and liking the Facebook page, um, all of the comments. I adore each and every one of them. And if you are brand new to this podcast, I really hope you enjoy it. Thank the friend that recommended it to you. Um, come on over to the Ravelry group and introduce yourself. Um, it's a small group so far, but we would love to hear from everybody. Um, also, the Facebook page, all of those links can be found down below. But I like to jump right into the knitting because I have a lot of it today. <laughs> a whole lot of knitting. Um, I suffered from a bit of cast on itis last week, so I've got a lot of projects to show you. And hopefully, oops, I don't knock everything off. Okay. The first one that I want to show you is a project that I thought would still be in hibernation this week, but somehow in some miraculous way, Knit Picks was on the ball getting yarn out, FedEx was very speedy in getting it here to me in Missouri, and um, yeah, I had new yarn by Friday. I ordered it late Monday night um, so basically I got it in three days and it usually takes all of two weeks for yarn to reach me. When I order it online, I was very happy. So the boxy, pardon me while I get it all untangled, the boxy is now separated for sleeves. I don't know how best to show you this because right now it's just a big gray panel. There we go. So all of that. Um, as you can see I've got it on two different sets of needles because I've got the back kind of being held. I'm not actually knitting on these. Um, they're just being held on those needles. I'm actually knitting on those needles. So um, I have that much of the front done. Um, I've got about an inch more to go and then I can start doing the neck shaping. And then I have to do the back and the back shaping and then the shoulder shaping and the sleeves and the neck. So there's still quite a bit of work to do on this but we're getting there. And you remember last week when I told you like I had stopped and ordered the new yarn and I was waiting for it. So that's why it was going into hibernation. I was waiting for the new yarn so that I could blend the two yarns together. I didn't need to worry about that at all. Completely unnecessary. So from where those wonky stitches are right in about here that's where I blended the new yarn sorry I'm trying to see I can't see through the sweater so you really can't tell a difference I mean you definitely can't tell it way back here even super close up you can't tell the difference I didn't need to worry about it at all now I just have some wonky stitches that I have to worry about blocking out when I'm done. So progress was made on the boxy. I only got to knit on it a little bit of Saturday and most of Sunday. But um, yeah, this coming week, this is going to be priority number one, is to get that um, worked on. I'd really love to get it off the needles because there's a couple other big things that I'd like to put on the needles. Um, but I kind of feel like I need to get this done first. So that's the priority knitting for the coming week. 
then the next priority will be hmm, where should I put all this? We're gonna throw it on the chair over there. Um, it's not that one. It's this one. So the Down River Cowl, which was a mystery knit along that I joined last week. Last week was the first clue. And here it is. So far. <laughs> um, so this was clue number one. There we go. Kind of see all of it. It's not super easy to tell. Well, that close up, it kind of is easy to tell. You can see that it's a real textured stitch there. And I really like how that light is just really bugging me. Um, I moved my furniture around so I could try to get a better, I don't know, and my overhead light is really bugging me, but it's too cloudy out today to not have it on. So I apologize for the bad lighting. We will get it figured out eventually. <laughs> um, but I'm really loving how the colors are coming together. It's easier to see the colors from back here. I really, really enjoy that. So the navy is my color A and the variegated, which is this one. That is going to be my color B. And clue number two uses pretty much just all of this one doing a lace pattern. So I'm very excited to get to work on that. And by next week, we should see what clue two is. Or you'll, you'll be able to see two clue. I know what clue two is because I'm gonna be knitting on it. The pattern arrived this morning for clue two. So yay for that. I'm excited about it. I actually, I found some really squishy scrap yarn when I was going through some scraps that I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, and I kind of want to like cast on another one already. <laughs> like maybe do two at a time, just like with a different lighter yarn too. I don't know. I really need to stop casting things on. So we'll see. Um, let's see what was next. Oh yes, this one. Okay, so last week I was just absolutely sure that I um, would have the boxy and hibernation, so I wasn't gonna be able to knit on that. Um, I needed portable knitting that I could take with me while I was driving Brooklyn around to dance stuff. Um, and I finished that cowl clue in like a day. So I didn't have it to knit on and I needed something to knit on. I didn't want to take the Florence scarf because lace, I need to be able to pay attention to the pattern. And I knew that I would be kind of sitting in the dark at some of these rehearsals from past experience. So I needed something that didn't require a ton of light. So I cast on a hat. Here's what I have so far. Um, so here's the story with the hat. Oops, sorry. I didn't mean to shake the table that my camera was sitting on. Um, I wanted a hat that was very lightweight, that had a lot of lace in it so that it was kind of like an open work. I wanted something to put on that, um, wasn't for warmth. It was more for Look how pretty my hat is. Um, so I got to searching around on Ravelry and um, came across one that I really, really liked. But unfortunately, you could only buy it as part of an ebook. And of the 18 patterns in the book, I only liked the hat. So I wasn't going to buy an entire ebook just for one hat. Um, I came across one from Brooklyn Tweed from Jared Flood that I really liked, and that actually probably will get knit 
fairly soon. I did really enjoy that pattern. Um, but it just, I don't know, wasn't quite, like, I didn't, I wasn't super excited about it. I liked it. I just, it didn't grab me the way the other one that was part of the ebook had. So I searched a little bit more and then I came across this one. And if technology works, you will now be seeing it on the screen. Oh, oh my goodness. I loved this hat. Um, did you see who it was by? It's by Hobie Locatelli. I've become a bit of a fangirl. The boxy sweater, it's a hoagie pattern. This hat, um, the mystery shawl that I talked about last week that I'm going to start in May. Hoagie Locatelli. I, I feel like I'm stalking her a little bit. <laughs> like, it's a little bit crazy. Like, every time I go to search for a new pattern or, or find something or I'm like searching around just seeing what's out there on Ravelry and I'm like oh that's a pretty pattern and I click on it I'm like oh my goodness I just there's something about her design aesthetic I must just really be drawn to because I have like three more of her patterns in my queue on Ravelry so this is being knit out of um palette which is a knit picks yarn because I have a lot of it in stash and I am knitting out of my stash if you tune into podcasts to see lots of new Indie Dyer yarn, it's going to be a while before you see that on my podcast because <laughs> I've got a huge stash that I must knit out of. So here are the three yarns that I'm using. This one is Wallaby and this one is Oregon Coast Heather and this one is Calypso Heather are the three. So these two will be the stripe. And then this will be the crown, the bright pop of color on the crown. I'm in love with this hat. I don't know why, but because it's just stripes, but they make me really, really happy. It's like they're very tiny. They're just the perfect. There we go with the color. I don't know. Like they're just. Uh, I, it's, I'm knitting on it. I'm like, okay, I got to do just, I want to do one more stripe. Let's see what another stripe looks like. Okay, we're going to do another stripe. Um, I usually wear a large hat. When I cast on patterns, I always pick the large size. However, when I cast this on, I stopped um, at the size, the number for the medium cast on. And... It looked huge and I knit a couple I don't know maybe five or seven uh, about maybe half of the brim length so it was more than that it was quite a few rows I knit quite a ways into it before I realized like that's just not gonna stay on my head at all um, so I ripped it out and cast on for the small size and I'm glad I did because I like a hat to stay on my head and this one, it does stretch out the brim just a little bit, but um, like I feel this, even if I need it real tall and slouchy, that's an unflattering picture of my arms. I'm sorry. Um, it'll stay on my head is what I'm saying. The other one would have slid off. I would have been fighting with it all the time. Um, so yeah. I, I, I'm doing, I put blah, 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 blah. I can't talk today. I cast on the small size, but I'm going to knit the height of the large and make it slouchy. Does that make sense? I hope so. So that pattern was called It's a Girl Thing Hat. I'm calling it my fangirl hat since I've obviously gone crazy for Hohi Locatelli patterns. Um, let's talk about, if I can find it, pardon me while I get really close. Okay, I'm back. 
I also knit on the Florence scarf. I'm loving it. It's so soft and it's so pretty. I'm not doing the beadwork on it. You can almost kind of see the pattern like when I hold it up like that. So it's just a really simple chevron lace pattern but I'm really enjoying how it's turning out so just a little quick peek at how far I've gotten on it just about that much so still work in progress I'm knitting that out of the Kiviet from Windy Valley Muskox it's their luxury blend which is the 45 Kiviet 45 extra fine merino and 10% mulberry silk. So it's this one. I just want to like. I wish I could afford to have like an entire garment made out of this because it would be amazing. Um, but I'm going to really enjoy that scarf. It's very, very nice. Okay that one back in there nothing too crazy to report on that one basically the only time I got to knit on it was when I was saving seeds for my daughter's recital on Saturday um, I like spread everything out on these five seats that I was having to save and I knit on that while we waited so that's most of what like the big projects that I've been knitting on oh no I take that back One more I told you guys I cast on a lot last week um, so if you remember my first episode I talked about how I knit for um, our a church group we have a prayer shawl ministry um, we had our knit or crochet night knit night the other night that's a lot of night 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 so I cast on a new afghan it is a circular. Right now it looks like a weird hat. Um, <laughs> let me find that. So, um, hopefully that comes out not backwards when I do the editing on this. But in case it doesn't, it's knitting from the center out. Um, by Daniel Yaws. Maybe I'm saying that right. Um, and the pattern that I'm knitting is right there. And it's called the Tree of Life Afghan. Um, the sample is knit out of Brooklyn Tweed, which I would love to be able, or not Brooklyn, yeah, Brooklyn Tweed Shelter is what it's knit out of, um, and I would love to be able to do that, but when you're knitting for other people who don't know how to take care of yarn, put this back in here, um, you really have no choice but to do acrylic so um yep Karen one pound that's the yarn I'm using um I'm not happy with the fabric that I'm getting it's really stiff like it has no drape to it at all um and I think it's because of the needles I'm using these are I have a knit cage down in my bag. Hang on. What size are these? These are a size nine. Um, so I think I'm gonna rip it out and try like um, an 11 maybe. I wanna go up a couple of needle sizes. This is just a really stiff fabric with all of those bobbles in it. I really like the pattern. 
I mean, the pattern's nice enough and everything. Um, it's just when you knit those baubles, like it, I don't know. I know it would probably block out okay at this gauge, but I feel like a 10 or an 11 would give me a better feeling end result. Because that's a pretty thick yarn. So I'm going to restart this one and see how it goes. If I still don't like it, then I will rip it out and crochet something. I'll do a different kind of lap blanket with it. But um, then I have gone a little scrap crazy. I let's let's kind of skip ahead just a little bit to finished object. You may have noticed that I am wearing my sleeves. So take this off here for a second. Um, the original, pardon the bra straps. Um, the original pattern, well, recipe that I was following, um, called for one that was long enough that it would go up the arm and kind of like around like a cowl and then down the other arm. However, I ran out of Felici scraps. Um, so I ended up going ahead and just um, decreasing and making the other, the other sleeve. Basically it was knit flat and then it had like a narrow part and it got really wide and you knit, 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 knit and then you decrease and go narrow again. And that gives you this sleeve. So you can kind of see where it increases there. And then I just um, crocheted up the inside to seam it. I just did a single crochet all the way up to make that seam. And then, um, honestly, I will probably seam it a little bit more just from putting it on this morning and um, wanting it to be just like go all the way up the arm instead of just like right now I have it stopping right here and it it's weird um, but I like them they keep me warm but yeah uh, I was I was completely out of scraps um, I had more Felici but it was like whole balls of Felici and I didn't want to do that so, um, so I decided to go ahead and stop and, um, and just kind of finish this one, but I still have a lot, a whole lot of scraps of other yarns left. And so what to do with them? I don't know. Um, so I got out the hexa puffs and I decided to start seeing how tedious it would be to tie them all together you can kind of see the little ties there at the corners that's um, that was the recommended way to attach all of your hexa puffs together was with little ties like that instead of actual sewing it gives it more of like a, a quilty look I guess um, and I decided, you know, that wasn't so bad. So I think I'm going to make an actual blanket size hexapuff blanket out of all of these. But still, I have a lot of scraps. Let me see if I can find my bag of scraps to show you. This bag... This huge, huge bag is full of scraps. Um, here were a couple of the fleecy scraps that were left. Like an entire ball of fleecy. Um, this whole bag 
is full of worsted weight scraps um, that I have no idea what to do with. But then, still, all of those, all of those sock scraps. Um, and I even took out a couple of balls that were like mostly full um, skeins of yarn that maybe, I don't know, I'd like knit like a baby hat off of them or something. Um, that I, they, colors work together so I'm going to put them together for a shawl. But still, I was like, there's no way that I'm just going to do hex puffs out of all of those. It's going to get boring. Um, and I'm sure that's not even all of the scraps. So I decided that in addition to the hexapuff blanket, where did it go? Ah, oh, it's sitting right beside me. It would have bitten me if it was a snake. Um, I also drank the Kool-Aid and started a granny stripe blanket. That gorgeous I was watching I think the first podcast that I saw it on was um, Danny from Little Bobbins had mostly finished one and she held it up and I was like oh that's gorgeous oh I need one of those um, I just absolutely loved the way that it looked get that closer up for you to see um I just really really liked the way that it looked and then I saw yarn hoarder her podcast she had pretty much finished one a bunch a bunch of ladies are knitting on them I think it's kind of like one of those all the rage type patterns and I'm even probably like a few months late to the party <laughs> Because <laughs> most of them that I have seen have been like, oh, remember that uh, granny stripe quilt that I was working on? Yeah, it's done. And so, like, I'm just starting mine, but theirs already finished. So, it's very long. Much, I'll fold it in half. And see if I can fit it all on screen. Nope, still can't fit it all on screen. There we go. That's a quarter of the size so it's a very I, I basically stretched out my wingspan and went just a little beyond that um, it was kind of hard to find the pattern um, and when I did find the pattern I, it really wasn't written the way that I would have that it didn't make a lot of sense to me um, so I kind of adapted <laughs> To my own version. Um, my foundation, I kind of wish I'd have picked a different yarn to start it in because this one's a really high twist sock yarn so it keeps pulling in on the corner. Um, but I did a chainless foundation single crochet. That's kind of upside down. I don't know, maybe you can see it better this way. There we go. So basically this part here um, I do that thing where you're making your first row of single crochet and your foundation chain at the same time and it it helps keep a neater edge and it's um, a stretchier edge and then it's also a lot closer to the gauge of the rest of your knitting so um, the other um, kind of I don't know that's a modification. I don't do the, I don't like the way the chain three looks on the end when I do crochet. So I don't know if you can tell from that. But um, I do a chainless turn. I don't know if that's what it's called. Basically, like I bring it up and I kind of swoop. Where's my needle? And I'll show you. Somewhere. My needle gets, my hook gets stuck sometimes. I never know where it ends up. 
oh who knows I probably dropped it on the floor um but basically like I take my needle and I just swoop behind and kind of pull it through the loop so I don't actually chain but I kind of make like my first stitch with just like a really tall loop I'll have to I'll have to find the tutorial and link it in the show notes of how I do my turns because it ends up with a much straighter edge I don't know if you can really see but do you see like it's a really nice neat straight edge whereas like the chain three you always end up with that weird like loop sticking out on the side so those are kind of the modifications I made um I am not being fussy about the scraps I just knit until the yarn's gone basically I'm taking the scraps I'm making like two hexapuffs and I'm taking the rest of it and putting it in this so I'm kind of working on these concurrently um and when I get to the end of my yarn, I just grab the next little piece of scrap and I do um, a magic knot to tie them together. Or I think it's called a weaver's knot. One of those two. Um, basically, I make a super tight knot at the end of the yarn um, and just go on about crocheting so I don't have to weave in any ends. Yay! So those are... <sighs> Finally, <laughs> finally, she's done talking about all of her projects, a lot of projects on the needles and on the hook. Um, but I do have the one finished object at least. Yay. And it is, it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Like I said, I want to sew up like this part um, so that it's like a full sleeve, but it's keeping me warm it's just like a nice little kind of shrug to put on and and stay warm with and I love how it's like all crazy colors so I also have some finished spinning to show you so um this was uh two 2.1 ounces or something like it's like basically two ounces of crazy bat that I bought um, it was mostly Wensleydale fiber this was um, part of a skein where I was learning to do the art yarn um, it's slightly better on the crazy color um, I really wish it didn't blow it all out. I, I wish my lighting was better, guys. I'm sorry. Um, so that was old one. And it was really, really energized. So I kind of... Um, I, I relaxed it as much as I could. I weighted it down when I when I dried it, which is a big no-no for most of, the, most of the time when you're doing hand spun yarn. You don't want to do that. Um, I also, you know, kind of when it was real wet I would like whirl it around my head and kind of whack it and stuff um but it did calm down and that's like 50 yards of art yarn and this was actually spun years ago I can't even remember how long ago it was but this is what was left of the bat so I spun it and you can tell it ended up a lot loftier I did my best to woolen spin it, um, but like I told you guys last week, I was having a really hard time fighting with this stuff. Um, it's not my favorite fiber in the world. I did, however, end up with uh, about 136 yards of um, fingering weight. I know that looks a little thick, but I promise it's a fingering. Put it on my forehead so you can see. It's a pretty thin yarn. Um, and there are thinner spots, so it's not super even. I didn't count my wraps per inch on it. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm mostly happy with it. It came out a lot better than I thought it was going to given all the fighting that I had to do with it 
Um, it's, oh, the other thing, it's a chain ply. I chain plied it. So it's kind of a three ply. I would call it a heavy fingering. There's some, there are some spots that are near lace weight. And there are a couple spots that did not ply so well. <laughs> but, um, you yeah, know, for the most part, I'm happy with it. I have no idea what I'm going to make with it. It'll probably sit in my stash forever because, yeah, um, I don't know. It's just one of those things, live and learn. I do not like Winsleydale <laughs> from now on. That's not what we're going to be spinning. However, I do want to put something else on the, on the wheel and I want your help helping me decide what to make. So here are the choices. I have this 64's Merino wool top from Into the World. Um, it was part of a fiber club, I think I was part of with them. So I don't want to take the whole thing out because it's not braided. You can kind of see it's blues and browns and some kind of greenish tones. Um, this I actually would probably spin in order to make like it's really soft so I'd probably want to make a shawl or something with it. So I kind of have an idea of what I would do with that. So that's option A is the merino top. Option B and C. Um, I have bats from Textile to Mono. Um, this one is called Coffee Bean. And it's hard, it's a really, really dark chocolate brown with bits of um, kind of white worked through. It says it's 80 merino, 20 bamboo, 20 silk. So, I mean, it's just a nice combed bat. Um, so it's again, really soft. I have a couple of things that it would go with. Um, but definitely kind of like in the scarf category for that. Um, so that's option B. Option C is another bat from Textile to Mono. This one is 100% merino and flash. So it's 100% merino and then it's got some sparkly sparklies in it. Oh, that's very pretty. So So that's um it would make a very stripy yarn because I think I could pull it apart and oh, look at that. Maybe everyone vote for this one. <laughs> um, so it was definitely, it's not carded and blended together. It's all separate colors. So I could definitely make um, something very stripy. I would probably pull apart each color and do all of the colors together and then chain ply and um, maybe make like a stripey something like a cowl or something out of it. I think that would look really pretty. So that would be the plan for this one. So help me decide, should I do um, the all brown bat? Should I do the end of the world or should I do the fun colors? Well, what do you want to see me spin? 
that's what I want to know. So, oh, sorry, I'm trying to itch my foot. Um, so comment down below on the video or go to the Ravelry page and I'll start a thread there. Um, or you can even comment on Facebook, wherever you follow me. I want to hear what should I spin next? Okay. So that is pretty much all I have fiber wise today, but I do want to give you guys a recommendation. Um, I, sorry, I'm reading my notes. Um, I spent most of my knitting time this last week watching a new show on Netflix that I absolutely loved. Um, I grew up in the 80s, and one of the shows that was mom-approved for us was Bill Nye the Science Guy. He would do all those fun experiments. I remember um, getting in a lot of trouble once because I tried to replicate his experiment of, um, like, showing, showing how volume works like you would put ice in a glass like built to the top and when the, the ice melted like did the water spill over kind of experiment yeah i did it wrong and got in trouble because i made a mess <laughs> but i just i remember loving all of his experiments and i wanted to be one of those kids on his show doing experiments with him well i'm all grown up and he's grown up <laughs> and he has this new show on netflix called bill nye saves the world and it's very much um, topics of the day that he is very passionate about, um, but he he shows the science behind it, and he shows why science is so important, even in topics that you wouldn't think are very sciencey. So, and it's kind of fun because he gets like celebrities who are about my age to come on the show and you know that these celebrities like watched him growing up like you can just see it in their eyes they're like standing there um doing like they get to put on the lab coat and the safety glasses and they're doing experiments with them in the lab and you can just see how giddy they are about like i'm finally doing experiments with bill nye so it brought back a lot of childhood nostalgia um i really appreciated the way that he talked about topics not in a a lot uh, how do I say this a lot of times when people are like well it's science so this is the way it is and you're just if you think any differently you're wrong and he doesn't really go about it in that way he's just like here are the facts here's how you can you know make up your own mind and he's very honest about the fact that um the one that I really, really enjoyed was the show he did on GMOs and how he was like, I was totally against GMOs and now I've come around to, it's not the answer to everything, but it's a tool in the toolbox. Like he kind of explains how, you know what, sometimes you look at the science and there you go. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was a great show. It was funny. It brought back a lot of childhood nostalgia and fun memories. Um, it was really well reported and well put together. Um, some of the episodes are kid friendly, some, not all of them. Um, and not all segments of every show are kid friendly, but there are parts of it where you could be like, hey kids, come look at this, like, and just show them that one experiment that he's doing. Um, but it is more geared towards adults instead of kids like his his one show was. But that's my recommendation is if you're looking for something new to watch, check out Bill Nye Saves the World on Netflix. So that is all from me this week. I'm sorry it went a bit long. <laughs> um, I had a lot of knitting to talk about. So next week, I think you will probably only be seeing the boxy and the cowl. <laughs> because those are the only two things that I plan to knit on. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, thank you guys again so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe so that you get all the notifications about when I post every week. 
come over and join the Ravelry group. We're a very small group and we're not very chatty yet, but I would love to hear from you guys about what you're knitting on and what you're working on or what you would like to see me talk about. Um, if you have questions that you want to ask, you can ask, you know, go over there and start some threads and let's get chatting on Ravelry. Um, same on Facebook. Always feel free to comment and chat. I always try to respond to all the comments, whether they're on YouTube or Facebook um, or Instagram. I've been pretty active on Instagram lately, so all of those links can be found in the description. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you all next week.